Now, joining me now is uh, Cameron Slater from the Whale Oil blog, who broke the story this week. Hi, Cameron. Thanks for coming in this morning. So, we have a statement from Bevan Schwang which says that on the night uh, of the election she met with John Polino. She says that Polino discussed a plan to force Len Brown to resign by showing him the affidavit about the affair. That's how they would force him to resign. Are you aware of that plan? I don't think she's actually being honest with you because that meeting, as I've ascertained this morning, didn't occur on the election night. We're told it occurred there was on two. Sunday. She saw him the night no. of the election and the Be next that morning. as it may, I still didn't have an affidavit from Ms Schwang until I received a draft from her on Monday night. Were you aware of the plan, though? No, no idea. And I, I don't know she, what she's talking she about. She then claims that she spoke to you on the Sunday morning. And that was the Sunday after the election. Correct. And that you told her that if she came forward, it would shame Len Brown into resigning. Well, it would. Did that discussion take place? Uh, it, would it, it would shame him into resigning. It should shame him into resigning. There's no uh, facts in dispute here about what was contained in the, in the affidavit. But on Sunday morning, I still did not have an affidavit. In fact, the only thing on Sunday morning that I had was four rather innocuous texts where Len But the discussion had taken place. Sure, I was talking okay. to a source. We viewed over 100 texts. I don't think anyone else has seen these texts between Waweji and Ms Chang. All point... Any of those between me All point and to... All of them point to Polino wanting pressure placed on Schwang to go public. Were you aware No, I was not aware pressure? of any of that pressure. At all. Not aware that there was... You spoke to her, though, on the morning after I the election. I spoke to her on the morning after the election. Now, you need to understand electoral law to understand that there's no benefit to John Polino in any of this. Well, we'll get to that. Can you confirm it was the Polino campaign that alerted you to this? No, I cannot confirm that because I'd received reports from many different places. So how did you find out? What was your principal source? Oh, well, look, there's rumours flying around about Len Brown for a long, yeah, but, long you know, time. You can't go... You can't go factually into a situation sure. unless so it's I was a approached um, initially by by Mr Wawegi and he said look I think I've got something here I said well put me in touch with with the person I still at that point demanded that I have an affidavit you can't run around with these sorts of things and stand them up so Mr Wawegi approached you yeah that's Polino's campaign no it's not Polino's campaign it's one person I didn't even know Who he works was conducting Polino's campaign it's not Cam Polino's campaign it was clearly, though, in Polino's interest that this was made public, though. It was in Polino's interest that this was made public at the beginning of the election campaign. It was made public after okay. the election had finished. So if news of this affair had come out before the election, do you think Polino would have won? Who knows? I mean, you, the Herald has well, the the produced a poll today saying that the Aucklanders don't think that this matters at all. So okay. I don't actually agree that Polino would have benefited from it. He would have maybe got a smaller a benefit from it, but I don't believe he would have got a Why large benefit. Why was everyone so keen then for this story to break after? The election. No one was keen for it to break after the election. You're thinking there's a conspiracy and a I'm plan. I'm not thinking at all. I'm just working out well, why. No, you're joining the dots that, that uh, David Lewis wants you to join. Ms Schwang said that it was she the made... desire for it to break after the election. Of course, Ms Schwang was still in a, in a relationship with Mr Brown while she's working on the Polino camp. Was she... it or was it that if Brown was forced to stand down after the election... Would it be almost guaranteed that Polino would win a by-election? It's no guarantee at all. My understanding is He would have been that... the front-runner, though, wouldn't he? Well, would he? Because if Brown wasn't standing, then there'd be all sorts of openings on the left wing. And the word that I've heard from my Labour sources is that Phil Goff was seriously con considering standing. And I don't think that John Polino um, would be able to build, beat Phil Goff. And there's no guarantee that Morris Williamson wouldn't come out of okay, the woodwork Okay, we're digressing either. a bit here. Well, but that's exactly all along right. I want we to are come... digressing. I, do, do you Away believe from that the if the affair had been... Affair, if the affair had been made public after the election, yeah. again, I'll ask you, Brown would stand down. Would Polino have won the You'd by-election? You have to ask. I, I have oh, no come idea. come on, you're immersed in Auckland politics. You sure. must know this. I don't believe he, he would have because there would have been all sorts of other candidates. Who knows what Mike Lee might have done? Who knows what a senior Labour person who's on, you know, done 23 years or more in Parliament would have done in standing? You can't say there's any guarantees for that. OK. Were you aware that and involved in uh, if, uh, the suggestion that if the statement was shown to Brown before or after the election, whenever, and he was forced to resign, that you would suppress that information 
and Brown no. could use the excuse that's, that he was standing down, he had a bit of a heart that's issue. That's an outrageous suggestion that I'd be involved in blackmail, because that's what that is. Well, that's your word, not mine. But this is what Ms Schwang yeah. suggests, that if she signed the affidavit, then if you showed it to Len Brown and said, look, we'll keep quiet Ms. about Schwang, this, you resign, say it's a heart problem. Yep. Ms Schwang can say whatever she likes, but the facts of, of this whole story is that from day one, my story, my details, all my explanations to the media, and I've been completely open to the media, I haven't gone into hiding, I haven't dodged anything, have been exactly the same from, from the word go. Ms Schwan, meanwhile, has said that she won't speak to media She's managed to talk to you guys on camera. She's showing you text. She's also speaking now exclusively to the New Zealand Herald. Her story has changed substantially. She hasn't spoken to us. Well, she gave, provided you with text. Yes. Okay. okay. So, so that's still talking okay. with the media. And, and, Hang and the on process a second. We'll just trying... clarify this. Right the way through, since the beginnings, neither Stephen Cook nor I have changed anything that we have said or done. And everything that we have said or done has stood up. The Len Brown had an affair for more than two years. All the details... She hasn't backtracked on any of that. No, but she's backtracked on a whole lot of other things, including... She's just revealed more details about what led to this. Including her statement did, she wouldn't did, speak to the media. Okay. Did you and Stephen Cook attempt to sell this story to Women's Day? No, we did not attempt to sell the story to Women's Day. And Women's Day have denied to you, I understand, that they made an approach. I'm quite happy to share with you the emails and the text messages and the phone logs that they actually approached me. So they approached you about the story. Yes. Who, how did they get wind of it? It was, it was everywhere. It was all over the, the blog. Well, the mainstream media wasn't aware of it. No, no. How would Women's Day get hold of it? No, Who you, told Women's Day? You, you can badger me all you like, but you can't change the facts that Women's Day contacted me after the story broke. Not before. There was no move made no, to approach Women's none. Day to sell the story about the affair no, with the mayor. No, that is a categoric lie, if anybody is saying that. In the statement that we have, Schwang says she received a threatening text message. She says she got it on the Sunday before the election, so a week before. She told me it was Tuesday. She hadn't signed an affidavit by then. Correct. So who would have sent that text? Well, I don't know. Nobody knows the Herald's conducting an investigation. The number that it was sent from also sent me a threatening text on the Tuesday, sent my father a threatening text on the Tuesday, sent John Polino a threatening text on the Tuesday, and two other unrelated parties to all of this. So you have Morris to... Williamson, I think, was sent a text. Well, too. I'm not going to confirm who it was. I'm not authorised to do that. We spoke to his office. Sure. So, OK, so he's admitted to receiving a threatening text. But hold, hold on a second, just to clarify this. That was on the Tuesday. I still didn't have a story. I thought there was no story here at all. I had never been sent any text from Ms. Shuan uh, on what that Tuesday. What did your text say? Uh, my text said uh, something along the lines of, uh, you know, you're going to wreck a person's life and it's disgusting that you're doing this. You must have a hunch where that text came I've from. I've got a very good hunch where that text came from because the number of people on the Tuesday who knew about this story uh, would be less than five people from my side, including Ms Schwan, and it would be uh, people close to Len Brown. Now, remember, Len Brown went on, on John Campbell's show and he admitted that he told his wife on Tuesday about the, about the, the possible release of this story. So, uh, you know, you've got threatening texts to Duncan Garner on, on radio mm. from David Lewis. That's you've a sideshow, got... really, because it's, we're well, talking about this. whole thing this... is a sideshow. We need to be talking about the ethics and behaviour of, of Mayor Len Brown, not anything else. Or do we need to talk about something else here? Because let's strip this right back. This was a plot, it seems, no, to discredit Len Brown. It's not a plot. And it was a political plot. Well, of so course it's where political. Earth, We're not playing tiddlywinks, Rachel. This where is on a earth politics. does this leave Auckland politics now? Well, the Auckland politics is the same as where any politics is, in that it's a dirty, disgusting, despicable game, and it involves dirty, disgusting, despicable people at all levels. And to have this sort of high and mighty um, belief that New Zealand politics is clean isn't. You know, we've had Trevor Mallard raising um, affairs in, in, under the protection of parliamentary privilege. We've had all sorts of allegations about other people. We've had uh, the Richard Worth affairs affair. Affairs happen in all aspects of life. Don't they? That's not a crime. Absolutely, it's not a crime, but it's not. I'm not. It's not the, the fact that he had an affair. It's the fact that there was jobs given to the mistress. There's the fact that the, well, the council Bevan properties. Well, Bevan says were... John Polino offered her a job if he became she, mayor. Would she swear an affidavit to that? We've got it in a statement. 
So what? Why is John Polino now in Australia? Uh, a planned holiday is my understanding, that, that with his fiance. So yeah, there's a lot of assumptions and there's a lot of leaping to conclusions, there's a lot of, you know, talks of plots. I can tell you that there was no plot from myself and Stephen Cook at all. We were dealing with a story and it wasn't until Monday, the day before the story broke, that we actually had all of the details of the affair. Prior to that, prior to that Monday, and Stephen Cook will confirm this when he first went and saw her, he sent me an email and said, mate, there's no story here. This is just a couple of silly texts, right? So all of a sudden right. it develops on the Monday okay. after all of these allegations that the Herald says there's a plot. If I didn't know about the details uh, on, until Monday, then no one else could have known about the details either. And so it goes on. Cameron Slater, Whale Oil Blogger, appreciate your time. Thank you for coming into Thank studio you. this morning.